We're just going to roll and see what happens. Ladies and gentlemen, joining me on the line as he does every Friday on the show or during the week or whenever we decide to record. I think it's Thursday. I don't really know. It's been a busy week. Friends, it is Mike Reyes from CinemaBlend.com. What's going on, dude? Today is Thursday, and, uh, you know, the usual. How about yourself? I know what you're feeling. We're getting ready for We've got a big uh, station event coming up next week. We've got uh, the Iowa State Fair, which is starting, and just a slew of other stuff going on. So it's... Uh, it's a very, very interesting week so far. But anyways, um, real quick, we are going to be... Okay, I remember what I was going to say. There was a second where the brain kind of stopped, and I'm like, come on, I need you to keep going here. <laughs> we are going to be doing a little bit of time traveling this week. Uh, the big movie out this week is The Haunted Mansion. Uh, I believe that's Disney, right? Yes based off of the attraction of the same name and the second adaptation of this very attraction besides the 2030 film. Uh, let me ask you this real quick, because we'll cover this at the end after a little bit of time travel. Do you have any good thoughts? Like, if you were going to look into the future and figure out what you're going to say about it, what do you think you're going to say? I'm hoping to like it, because believe it or not, I actually like the other Haunted Mansion movie. I liked the Eddie Murphy Haunted Mansion. Okay. I thought it was fun. Okay. I am excited to see this new one, uh, but we'll see. All righty. Yeah. Okay. Well, we will also be diving more into Disney because there's some secret invasion stuff out there that we need to talk about. But anyways, uh, Mike Reyes from CinemaBlend.com is on the line with me uh, this week as we wait for the time travel to happen. We'll start with, uh, I, we're going to start with something I really want to talk about, and it's Strange New Worlds. They did the crossover episode, and it could be one of the greatest episodes of Star Trek ever created by mortal man. Ah, so, whoa, well, that's, that's high praise. Uh, which, uh, please, enlighten us on what okay. this. I know what it is. All right. Not everyone may know what it is. Please enlighten us on this big crossover. So on Saturday, a buddy of mine, he, he texts me and he goes, they released the episode early. It's always supposed to come out on Thursday. We were supposed to be getting it today, but as in Thursday when we're recording, but they released it on Saturday. And the crossover episode was between two of the Star Treks that you're like, really? Uh, it's Strange New Worlds and the animated uh, Star Trek Lower Decks. They did a crossover Which, episode. from what I've seen of that series, it's hysterical. Yeah, it, think Family Guy in Star Trek. So much heart. Yes, it, it it's hard. That's the best way I could describe it as like Family Guy in, in Star Trek, but that's just kind of the the hijinks and so that kind of stuff. It's not dirty. Well, it can be dirty by every once in a while, but it's just kind of, uh, that's just the best way I could describe it. It's probably not a great way, but it's the best I can do with my simple small brain that's working at about 75% efficiency right now. They took the voice actors from Lower Decks and they had their real life counterparts, you know, act in Strange New Worlds. And it was just, it is so fantastic on so many levels. They even redid the opening of Strange New Worlds in the animated style as uh, Lower Decks. They even had a couple jokes oh, wow. from that worked in. They did an animated version of Strange New Worlds at the very end. They they had so many in-jokes in it. It wasn't just done as for ha-has, like we have to force feed a crossover. It wasn't an Iron Man yeah. 2 crossover. It was... This story actually works the way we want it to. It's not setting up anything. It's not pushing anything or, you know, a, a, another series down the road. It's just a crossover that really worked really well. Well, it's just like Trials and Tribulations. I mean, that was another moment where that could have went wrong in, in yes. like lesser hands. But that was not only a lot of fun, very technologically groundbreaking at the time. And it just worked. They they did the jokes that they do in Lower Decks, but they did it in a very strange New Worlds way that worked. That was that was my worry because if you watch Lower Decks, like it can get kind of out there and weird sometimes, but it fits so well, and it's such a good episode of Star Trek. It was so That's much. That's what makes me even. By the end of it, it was so much fun, and it was fun in a way that was different than the season finale of Picard, where the world wasn't at stake. Does that make sense? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, it wasn't. It wasn't a lot of fan service being sort of mixed into. Okay, we're throwing this all in here because everything's on the line. It's like, no, we just really want to put these two worlds together, and we found a good reason. I think my favorite joke in the whole thing was Bo uh, Boiler, the one character. He goes to step onto something. He puts his leg up and he goes Riker. <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> if you're into this. Which is even better. Can- yeah, it, go, it, because Jonathan Frakes actually uh, uh, directed the episode, and he's right. I love how so. much how much of a part of of the Star Trek fabric that Jonathan Frakes has been, even before making cameo appearances, like directing some of the movies, directing other episodes of other series. Like he's just been yeah baked in for forever and he's one of those people that really understands trek it was just really good jokes done in a very star trek way and it just oh god it was so good and it just made us feel like star trek is kind of finding this new stride not only in terms of sort of really good television but also just bringing back the humor yes because you've got Strange New Worlds, which seems very much, it, like people have said, it's sort of like episode of the week and very, it's bright, it's colorful. You've got these fantastic, you know, these bright, these actors that are equally bright and colorful. And then you have Lower Decks, which is very much, it does have a heart to it, but it's very hysterical. It, it is, and I think, because there's a couple different ways to look at this, and I think Strange New Worlds kind of benefited from kind of inter it was kind of a launch into Star Trek Discovery because the whole second season, you know, has Pike and, you know, Spock and all this in it. So it kind of got a soft it was kind of a soft opening for the series, if that makes sense. But Yeah, like Enterprise had a back I'm sorry, I discovered was sort of the backdoor pilot for Strange New World. Yeah, the so Discovery I mean, there's been the whole thing about, oh, it's too woke or uh, you know, it's this or that. It's just a buddy of mine said it really well about Star Trek, uh, Star Trek Discovery, the first season. He goes, it's great science fiction. It's not Star Trek. And Well, yeah, because it feels like people might have harped a little too much on the more serious side of Trek without having as much fun, because I know you've complained about them crying every episode. It's that, but it's also, it's finding that middle ground, because if you look at Star Wars trying to do nostalgia and Star Trek trying to do nostalgia, they've both screwed it up in different ways, where Star Wars, at one point, they're just going to feed you all this crap and be like, hey, look, X-Wing, hey, Han Solo, blah, 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 just kind of shove it down your throat. This is what you wanted. Yeah. And then Star Remember Trek. Remember Star Wars? Yeah, exactly. When Star Trek came back with Discovery, and even Picard, it was like, no, we're not giving you any of that. This is something completely different. And it's like, yeah, but I, I listen, I, I like steak, but steak comes yeah. with different sauces. And sometimes, you know what? Uh, the, the, the steak itself is Star Trek. You could change the sauce, but you still got to give me the Star Trek. You still need the steak. You still need the mushrooms. You still need the onions. Um, so, and well, I will also, just for. Just a quick note, uh, uh, that Remember Star Wars gag is from YouTuber Lyle Rath, who had this wonderful video about Star Wars The Force Awakens and how he, he tore the movie apart, and he just, like, kept highlighting how they, they hit those legacy notes, and he's like, Remember Star Wars? <laughs> you have to figure out how to do nostalgia right, because nostalgia can go wrong real quick, which we've seen with these different oh, yeah. uh, these different uh, uh, production. You know, whether it's Star Wars, Star Trek, or you know whatever. But Star Trek has really started to figure out their like their modern era stride. Mm. So I think that's a little bit more of what's going on here, where they've kind of figured out what works, what doesn't, what the fan base wants. I mean, let's face it. I mean, they gave us the Enterprise D in all its glory again and made everybody, oh, of, you yeah. know, of that generation the happiest son of a on the face of the earth, you know? And with this, they just... Sometimes you just got to do it. Yeah, it's like... But they worked it into the story and they didn't, weren't just... Uh, hey, there's a Millennium Falcon in the background or whatever. But anyways, um, we've talked way more about Star Trek than I thought we would. But um, listen, if you're not watching... Strange and that's New- not a bad thing. <laughs> if you're not watching Strange New Worlds or Lower Decks, you're missing out on really good Star Trek. I'm going to tell you this right now. I'm still not completely sold on Discovery. Like I, I think it's gotten better as it's gone, but... Uh, it's still not my favorite. I just, I wish I could say it was, but it's just not. Well, you've only got to put up with it for one more season and then that's it. <laughs> I haven't even finished the last season. I just kind of gave up in the middle of it. it I just, it, I just, it was, it, it just was not. And somebody, I actually saw somebody talk about this the other day and, and they pointed out something. I never thought about it until I saw it. And I'm like, oh my God, that's it. Is with Discovery. You remember how at this one I said it wasn't the end of the world. They were just dealing with a situation in this episode, right? Strange New Worlds and Lower Decks. In Discovery, it's Mm -hmm. always about the end of the world. 
it's always about the end of existence or the end of Starfleet or, you know, it, it's all, it, they said they never have a day off. Yeah. And I think that's a big part of it. Huh. Mike Reyes from CinemaBlend.com joining me on the line to talk about movies and entertainment and such. Uh, let's move over to Secret Invasion because uh, we touched on the Disney stuff a little bit ago, and uh, you know, kind of w- well with the uh, with the movies and also Star Wars a few seconds ago. But uh, in general, uh, Secret Invasion wrapped up. Uh, I have not seen the episode yet. I've seen some pictures and read a few things about it, and. I don't care to watch it. Does that make me a bad oh, person? So you're basically where I was at episode one. <laughs> we we let the... I watched that first episode and it's like, I don't have time for this. Why is it when Marvel retcons something like it's a retcon? Remember when Marvel was movies <laughs> and good ones? But it's like Like it, Guardians of the Galaxy? The the last episode we watched, we found out something. And it was so preposterous that I, I just like, f*** you, Disney. <laughs> That's the level of... Yeah, I know. <laughs> do, do you know what I'm talking about? I have a feeling I do. Do you care if uh, I say you can it? Just go ahead and talk about it. Okay. Anyway, is it is it Rhodey being a scroll? Well, it's not just that. It's where, where this series is leading. Do you care if I say it? No, not at all. I mean, was it, has, has he technically been a scroll since after Civil War? I, I don't know when. He is a scroll, and, and spoilers, I should probably say, if you haven't watched the series finale or whatever. But they're leading up. It's the whole thing about them trying to make super scrolls, right? Yeah, and, yeah, that's been a whole thing through the season, and, like, Amelia Clark's scroll gets to be one. And at some point, <laughs> this is the, listen to how preposterous this is, okay? So... Okay. After the battle in Endgame, do you know what Nick Fury did? Oh, I heard about that. He collected DNA from all of the Avengers. And like Thanos and all these other people. In case we need them. It's like, really? I could buy you having a flying f-ing aircraft carrier. I cannot buy you. Surprise, there was a giant battle for the uh, future of, you know, the universes. We we need to get there and get the blood, just in case. You know how dumb that sounds? Uh, I mean, I, I don't know if it's dumb or if it's just petty and toothless and stakeless, because it's like, okay, at any given moment, we could bring back these uh, these stars, these people. You want to see Steve Rogers again as Captain America? He's a clone. Again, it goes back to what we had talked about with Star Trek a few times. It has to be believable within the world you've created. Yeah. And that whole thing, it's just, it's not believable in that world. That (laughs) after a surprise battle that nobody knew was coming, you had enough forethought to have people go and pick up blood so you can make a super scroll at some point. And someone was even saying, you know what? Maybe that should have been your your post-credit scene for Endgame. Where you see like a a, glo- a hand turning into a scroll, like collecting all his DNA. It. I mean, you want to know what level of uh, and I'm I'm gonna use this word, but you know what level of that is? It's right oh, up. Oh, what level? Of is it? It's right up there with Han shot first. Like going back and re-editing that. Oh yeah. To me, it's that level, and like I said, like I read that, and listen, I didn't hate the series so far. Did I love it? No. But up until that point, it's like, oh, God, why? Why? Yeah, it's, it's those wonderful retcons that are like, we got to change this. Why? For reasons. Yeah, so anyways, uh, Mike Reyes from CinemaBlend.com will get off of uh, Secret Invasion here. Um, real quick, uh, as we do get towards the time-traveling element of the show this week, uh, we got our first look in just a picture of the Iron Claw. It's going to be the story about the Von uh, Eriks from uh, the world of wrestling. Yeah. Uh, A24 has announced the film for a Christmas release, and we have our first photo of the men playing the Von Eriks. And that includes Zach Efron, Jeremy Allen White from The Bear, and Harris Dickinson from The King's Man. This is going to be really interesting. And it is, because I don't know the whole story, but I've seen bits here and there while researching the the write-up that I did for this new photo. But first of all, these guys are built to to (laughs) no end. And that's the first thing that people are probably going to latch on to. But 
that's just part of it because obviously this is a very serious and a very tragic story and it's yeah. going to be very interesting to see how those two sort of things are balanced out because obviously there's going to be spectacle as well as you know just a serious tone to it I'm interested to see Zach Efron do this because he's pretty athletic and you've uh, legitimately got one of the better wrestlers on the planet right now, uh, MJF, playing uh, Lance Von Erich. This is pretty cool. I'm excited about this. Oh, Chavo Guerrero's yeah, in it as the th- Sheik? That's hilarious. Just knowing the basics about this, I'm I'm excited. And I figured you would be really excited, which is why I wanted to, to talk it over with you on the show. I'm looking at uh, I'm looking at the cast list right here because all you saw up to this is all the Von Erics, you know. Uh, Rick Flair, who's Aaron mm. Dean Eisenberg? Is that uh, what's his name's little brother or something? I don't know. Uh, boy, I don't know if he looks much like uh, Rick Flair. I wonder if I will do a Rick Flair movie. I don't know if he could. <laughs> Chavo Guerrero uh, as the well, Sheik is interesting. <laughs> Chavo Guerrero is not a, a big man. Sheik was a big dude. I mean, dude. he might be for this. I mean, the well, I Did guess you, he was yeah. 5'11", 250 is what he was billed at. Chavo Guerrero is 5'9". Okay, so height, he's there, but he's not near, like, big, big enough. So maybe they can do some movie magic well, with you that. Can, well, you could work on that through, through training and stuff. I mean, Jeremy Allen White talked about how he was on – one of those good old fashioned disgusting diets that helped him bulk up for for Carrie Von Erich. Oh, because he'll be playing Carrie. Uh, Zach Efron's playing Kevin Von Erich. Wow, this is going to be interesting. I wonder because this is going to be dark. I mean, this is not a happy story. I mean, that's one of uh, this family is one of the royal families of wrestling. Now I'm excited. I want to see Holt McCallany is in there. I'm assuming playing the dad, Fritz, and Holt McCallany's pretty built to begin with. All right, so Iron Claw looks like it's going to be a good movie. It should be at least be a lot of fun. Hopefully they do the wrestling part justice. I mean, you've got MJF from AEW in there. I mean, he is a current legitimate world champion in pro wrestling. You know, you ever hear the thing when they do, like, baseball movies or football movies where the actors, like, get into it and they start really, like, hitting each other and stuff? I wonder how much they'll do with the pro wrestling. Me too. And I agree with you that I really want justice to be done by it just because, again— we're starting to see historical biopic movies coming from sources that people really haven't seen explored before. And if this does well enough, I mean, maybe they'll do another, maybe they'll do like a WWF origin story. Like, I mean, you'd probably have to pry it from Vince McMahon's hands so that see, way it doesn't become too aggrandizing. See, that's the thing about some of this is you, you, when, when WWE owns some of this stuff, like when they do the biography stuff, it's never the complete story because they're only putting it in the best light possible. Uh, unless it's Macho like, Man really, where they threw that dude under the bus pretty quick. But Like I enjoyed uh, fighting with my family, but I wonder how much of that was like, I know that was an official WWE film. So I'm wondering how much of that was like, hey, this is I, the version we wanted to tell. And that's how we got The Rock in here. If you go and you rewatch the actual match, that leads up to Paige winning the championship. It's awful. Yeah. It is an awful match. Oof. It, it And what's sad about it is uh, AJ Lee, who she beat in that, completely off the subject, but she's, she's a really, really good professional wrestler. Hmm. She's also not totally off the subject. We're still talking wrestling. Uh, she's also on that, which I don't have stars. I want to check it out. Have you have you seen heels? No, but I want to see that. I'm telling you, the more I talk to you and other friends about wrestling, <laughs> the more it sort of piqued my interest in like both fiction and nonfiction to sort of check stuff out, especially like the Attitude Era, because that seems to be the huge turning point where like everything sort of changed like that was a huge pivot into what we've got now you know it there was a pretty big change but i think the bigger change that would be make an more interesting story is back when vince jr took over for his dad and how he kind of killed the territories that would be that's probably the bigger change i i get what you're saying with the attitude era but there's a uh, the attitude era also came along because of what uh wcw was going that wasn't just a that's almost you're getting into more of the monday night war stuff because the Mon- the attitude era was a result of the monday night wars because that was when yeah. you had vince uh, finally you know take the comic book characters out of wrestling and you know do you know make it more real or you know that sort of thing um but I think if you went back and this will be the Von Erichs, that'll be more kind of in the territories type stuff. 
where you hear about some of these different territories and how things worked and how guys made deals with each other and how fights happened. And it, it I, I, that's what I'm kind of interested with this is because of the, the time period it was for that, those territory days. Yeah. I was like a relative noob. I'm just, I'm excited no, to, to really get into this stuff. No, you're fine. Listen, you, you You've got nothing to uh, apologize about for it. It's just, there. It's I'm it's not like apologizing at all. It, it's it's one of those things where there's just so much, so much history to this. Oh, it, yeah, because you're going back to like what the seventies, the sixties, even no, or like late eighteen hundreds and stuff. Oh, bully! I mean, professional wrestling. Well, let's check old Wikipedia. I mean, it's shame they, that Teddy Roosevelt didn't get in on this. I mean, there was there was a point where it was covered in the newspapers like it was real because people weren't in on it. Uh, huh. wrestling, uh, wrestling in America blossomed in popularity after uh, the Civil War. Huh. So it kind of, you know, I mean, there was some growth and, you know, it's, uh, uh, you know, all of that. I mean, what was happening then is much different than what's happening now. But, I mean, there there is a lot of... A lot of history. The Again, I'm re- I'm j- I'm just excited to. Lo- I like learning about things, and this <laughs> is something that, you know, my cousin was into it when I was a kid, and I just wasn't yeah. having it. She's like, mm, you know, it's not, I'm not that interested in this. I got all this other stuff over here. I like movies. And it's like just the more, the, the more that I've gotten to know friends of mine, it's like, well. It's so- this is like wrestling is for geeks. Yeah, it is like the middle ground between geeks and jocks, and it's like I am so sad that I did not pay attention to this back in the day. Yeah, it's and it's what's really cool about it is when you when you have people in it that are do you know that are really professional about this that really know what they're doing when you when they can take you and make you forget that it's fake or that it's it's got a an ending already planned that's yeah. what it's the best so this should be a lot of fun mike reyes from cinema blend.com uh how about we do some uh, time traveling and we'll talk about the haunted mansion yeah haunted mansion and the beanie bubble oh yeah that too <laughs> oh yeah that's it it always goes you back to norm movie. for us <laughs> yeah yeah you, you, you know you're gonna do some time traveling here you know yeah you got those, those little things there like stuff with little beans and it's like why why am i taking care of this thing and i, I got a baby in the other room I don't, I don't get it man time travel complete my friends we're back mike race from cinemablend.com is on the line with me it Boy, is uh <laughs> it is friday morning and hey real quick I want to go back to Secret Invasion for just a second. Oh, let's 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 eat the dead scroll. Let's go. So last, <laughs> so last night I'm sitting around and I'm you editing. Like I'm editing the earlier chunk of what we recorded, right? Yeah. And a thought hit me about the the whole harvest and the uh, Nick Fury going out to get blood at the battlefield thing. Yeah. He had just come back from the blip. He had been legitimately wiped out of existence for five years. And you want me to believe that he still had his resources together enough that he had a team on the ground being able to go around and find DNA from a battle he didn't know was going on at that very moment. That's an interesting question. I, I mean, I mean, I would love to hear more stories about what happened during the blip. Like, was it just like, did they ever really fully tackle what happened in the blip if it was just like people were in limbo and like all of a sudden snap back or i they, they may have and I, maybe i just wasn't paying attention that day in class but what if the blip like the people who got blipped out were leading a completely different existence somewhere else and they don't remember it kind of like how people have secret families in other towns apparently yes <laughs> no but i was thinking about that last night and i'm like F- you marvel That doesn't make sense. Of all the things you want me to believe in, that doesn't... I will believe that there is a quantum realm where Ant-Man went and fought Jonathan Majors and uh, what's-her-name had sex with Bill Murray. I can believe that. I can believe that there is a talking raccoon that wants revenge on the guy that created him. That's basically Frankenstein. What you're wanting... That's basically me on a Thursday. (laughs) <laughs> you what you want me to believe in secret invasion makes no goddamn sense. Uh, it's uh, I know one of my colleagues actually wrote a feature about this because even well similar to, to, to this sort of complaint because in the middle of the season he was like 
I think Marvel's writing themselves into some really tight corners. I don't know how they're going to pull out of it. It goes back to the whole thing of keep your story simple. Yeah, but it's it's kind of hard to do that when you've got this massive, unwieldy thing that needs to that feels a need to connect to everything. I, I know, I but keep... even with within that within that realm, I mean, I feel like you could do Secret Invasion and do it well. Like the 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 idea that there are scrolls living among us for you know thirty years at this point. That's a really interesting topic. The way they did it, it just, it's like, no. Oh. You had something really cool and you botched it. And that's what it kind of felt like to me when I was watching that first episode of Secret of Vision. Because it's like, oh, you're trying to do like turncoats and spies yeah. and all this other stuff. And it's like, uh... the. I mean, it basically Secret Invasion should have been Who Done It, and finding out that there's a lot of leaders that are in being impersonated by scrolls. It's an it's an alien invasion story that's been told a billion times. I know. So, anyways, uh, Mike Reyes from CinemaBlend.com on the line with me right now. Uh, we were going to be talking about uh, the Haunted Mansion, the b- 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 the stuffed animal movie, which I can't think of at the moment. The Beanie Bubble. Beanie, there you go. And uh, I want one last thing before we go. Yeah, go ahead. One last thing. You said you said MCU Who Done It. You know the first thing that came to mind. What? You know who could have ferreted out the scrolls? Who? Ben Blanc. Oh, him and uh, what's her name from Poker Face? Oh, oh, Ryan Johnson doing an MCU project where it's like Charlie and Ben Blanc teaming up to like out scrolls. I just. <laughs> Oh, Ryan that'd, Johnson, please do that. That'd be odd. I just, uh, Ryan Johnson in general, I want to see a crossover between uh, Poker Face and Benoit LeBlanc. I think that would just be I, I, amazing. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Yes. I don't know how they would do it, but I would love that. But And especially because you know that, that Daniel Craig and Natasha Leone would, oh, wait, I don't know if it can, because I think he had said that, Poker Face technically exists as a TV show in the Knives Out, uh, in the Benoit Blanc universe, because when he's playing Among Us with Natasha Leone, she's on the set of Poker Face. Okay. And, well, we can figure it. Whatever. I want to see that. <laughs> I do too. No, I'm not trying to talk us. Uh, look, I'm not trying to talk us out of a seafood and steak dinner here. I'm just making sure that the, 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 the catch is fresh. That's a, I like the way you worded that, Mike Reyes from CinemaBlend.com. All right, let's get over to uh, Haunted Mansion. What do we think? It's okay. <laughs> I knew you were going to say I that. I, like that. I knew you were going to say that. I think I like the Eddie Murphy one better, to be honest. Really? Okay, so uh, came out, went and saw it last night. It's okay. Why is it only okay? It's okay because I... It doesn't... Feel, it does. There, it doesn't feel like there's a lot of energy behind it, even though there's a lot of obvious like imagery and 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 action is going on the screen. But it didn't really feel that compelling to me, even though it is an interesting concept. And I do. There are some really surprisingly emotional moments that work really well in here. And I just kind of wish that there was a little more of that and a little more of a, of a, like the story behind the whole mansion itself and everything is very quick, very by the numbers, especially when you look back at Haunted Mansion 2003 and the story that had going on. Yeah. Huh. And, but it's still fun. It's, it's, uh, what I'm really excited for is for young kids to use this as gateway horror, to use this as like, this is the movie that kind of, lights the candle for kids that want to go watch more spooky movies. Like I can imagine people sitting their kids down in front of this and then they watch Hocus Pocus and then they sort of start getting into that stuff and parents can have those conversations and expose them to those sorts of movies. I was just thinking about the poster with like uh, when they put the different uh, quotes of critics up, it's gateway horror. <laughs> That's not a bad term. That's not that is a term that is very in fact a lot of people have have been upset that gateway horror has kind of been very it's kind of been a hit or miss for a while because they don't really you, you know you don't really make movies like that for a kid like another really good example is scary stories to tell in the dark that is prime gateway horror where it's yeah. like it's not R rated but it's still scary and it's enough to like expose kids to te- to test like do you like horror movies or not like gateway horror is something that was big with like stuff like the monster squad in the eighties. Oh boy. 
Uh, Mike Reyes from CinemaBlend.com on the line with me right now. All right, so Haunted Mansion is okay. If you have kids, go see it, and they will get all into the horror scene. Uh, talk to me about this Beanie Babies movie. Uh, so it's The Beanie Bubble, which is on Apple TV Plus right now. And it is a biopic about uh, the creation of and the implosion of Beanie Babies. Yeah, that burned quick. I remember that as a kid. Oh, and they, they definitely go through it, and they go into all the, the sordid details. And I was really primed to see this movie, and when I ended up sitting and watching it, I kind of felt like it was underwhelming. And I don't know why. Like, I was really excited for this because, again, this is the year of Tetris where it's like, I didn't think you could make a movie about the creation of Tetris and it would be that compelling. And it was. And then there's this movie about the creation of Beanie Babies and, like, good performances, great cast. I just was, like, okay with it. Like, it it didn't feel... You know what? it, It didn't have that special, that factor that really compelled you. So... I wonder, and I haven't seen it, but it's just about the creation of it, right? Well, it's about the creation and and running it. Like, this is about uh, Ty Warner, played by Zach Galifianakis. Like, everything from when he first had the idea to basically the collapse of the company and then seeing them sort of want to fight eBay resellers and getting exposed to the internet as a business tool. Like, there's all this sort of stuff that's going on. And maybe that was it. Maybe it's that it, it, it's told through various points of view, through three different women that knew Ty and that all were in his circle and were all like betrayed by him in some way, shape or form. And that's a compelling story in and of itself. I think maybe, maybe if you either picked that or picked the Beanie Baby story, it would have worked better. I was but, just thinking I mean, if... It's, like if you did the creation, but then you tied in like the story about that guy. You remember the the guy who spent all of his money on buying Beanie Babies because he thought they were going to be worth something. Yeah, and then it was like I lost everything. Like if you would have tied, you know, you have the business side of the story and then like a personal side of the story. Yeah, and kind of weave those two together. Maybe that would have. I don't know. It could have been. I mean, I I, I don't know. I haven't seen it, so I just. Yeah, it's one of those cases where it's just weird that sometimes you can't put your finger on what's missing, but you know that something's missing. Yeah. <laughs> I told that to my wife the other night. She had made uh, something for something uh, something for supper, and I said something to that effect, and it did not go well. <laughs> I go, it's missing something, but I can't figure out what. <laughs> So, oh, thanks for the uh, pity laugh there, Mike. I appreciate it. No, that was actually a legit laugh. <laughs> it's like, You know what it sounded funny. like on my end? It was like, eh. <laughs> See, on my end, I thought you were going to say it sounded like Pee Wee Herman. Like, <laughs> no, it was just, it was, it was like, eh. It's like, oh, thanks. I appreciate hey, hey, hey. that. <laughs> You're going to be okay. <laughs> Mike Graves from CinemaBlend.com. All right, so that kind of wraps up the movies uh, for this week. Um, oh, real quick, can I throw in one more thing about Strange New Worlds? Yes, of course you can. Um, I watched, well, I just, uh, since we're recording on Friday, I got the chance to watch the new episode that came out last night. Boy, they went from jovial, one of the best episodes ever where you feel good coming out of it to one that basically deals with PTSD. Ooh. It, it was now a- that Star Trek. <laughs> it was, it was as big, it was about as big of a change as you can make from one week to another. That's, I mean, I, I wasn't even kidding when I said that, like, that Star Trek, yeah. like, that to me has always been, like, I remember watching, watching, like, sampling here and there between the movies and then Next Gen through Voyager on TV. And just, like, having that, that tonal change where it's like, you don't always have to be self serious And this is just circling back to what we were saying before, like, Trek doesn't always have to be self-serious and... yeah. And, you know, uh, topical. But at the same time, there's some stuff that they can dig into some really deep stuff when you think about it. The the story, this is the first time, and, and I don't want to dr- go too far into it because we're kind of long in the tooth today. But it was the first time that I'm not sure they had the story completely or didn't flesh it out enough. Huh. It, it, was, it, it was an episode that I like all the characters in it and what they're 
trying to do with them, but I don't think they accomplished it. It just kind of ended at one point, and I'm like, oh, okay. And maybe possibly I was tired. I don't know. I'm gonna rewatch it, but yeah, it was it was interesting. So yeah, I no, I get you. Sometimes it, I feel I'm like that. It's like maybe I watched this at the wrong time of day, and I don't know. Yeah, it really wanted to work. Yeah, so anyways, uh, that's going to do it for us this week. Mike Reyes from CinemaBlend.com joins me every Friday on the show to talk about movies. We'll end it there. And Mike, you have yourself a good weekend. You too, man. Have a good one. Riker!